This is another installment in a series of videos on books that stick in my brain. I've talked about Jim Jordan's Through New Eyes. I've talked about the work of John Frame. Uh, most recently, I've talked about the work of John Milbank, my doctoral supervisor, and particularly his book, Theology and Social Theory. What I wanna do in the next few videos is something a little bit different, not so much a book that sticks in my brain as a theologian that sticks in my brain. That theologian is the Jesuit, French Jesuit theologian, Henri de Lubac, who lived from 1896 to 1991, covered most of the 20th century with his life. Uh, he was a leader in what was known as the Nouvelle Theology, a movement within French Catholicism in the early and middle part of the 20th century. It was a controversial movement. He clashed with leading Thomists of the time. The Thomists were in, in control of the theology curriculum at uh, various uh, Catholic institutions. And de Lubac and his cohorts and his uh, compatriots clashed with those entrenched uh, theologians and those entrenched teachers of the church. Um, at one time, he was uh, uh, silenced, virtually silenced. Some of his books were taken out of circulation until they were checked. In 1950, the Pope, Pope Pius XII, issued uh, an encyclical letter where he warned against, at least in, by some interpretations, he warned against de Lubac and the Nouvelle Theology. Um, but uh, de, de Lubac's work, along with, uh, along with theologians like Yves Congar, uh, Jean Danielou, and others, uh, particularly French theologians in the Catholic Church, uh, were instrumental in changing the landscape of Catholic theology in the 20th century. Uh, by the time we get to the 1960s and the Second Vatican Council, uh, de Lubac and the others who were in this movement are being vindicated. Uh, he was at the Second Vatican Council, his, his uh, compatriots, his collaborators with the Second Vatican Council, and really the Second Vatican Council is the vindication of the Nouvelle Theology. Uh, and uh, many of the changes that took place in Catholic theology and were uh, inst institutionalized at the Second Vatican Council arose first among these French Jesuits. Uh, de Lubac uh, wrote a lot of books, large books, so it's not any single book that sticks in my brain, but a set of issues that de Lubac is obsessed with over the course of his entire life. He wrote a number of books on, on the relationship between nature and the supernatural. Uh, and I want to touch on that in another video. Uh, he wrote a very, very important book on Eucharistic theology called Corpus Mysticum. That was one of the books that was kind of placed on the index and, and withdrawn from circulation uh, and, until he was vindicated and it was released. Um, that's a, a, an extremely important book in the history of Eucharistic theology. He wrote a book called Catholicism, uh, which is in a Christ and the Common Destiny of Man. It's about the church. Uh, and he also wrote a four volume uh, study of medieval exegesis, where he talks about the history and the development of what's known as the quadriga, the fourfold interpretation of the Bible. Uh, uh, he wrote a, a lot of other things too. He wrote a book on the development of modern atheism. Uh, he wrote some on uh, Joachim of Fior, a late medieval kind of mystical apocalyptic theologian. And he wrote a, a, a lot of other things too, but those are some of the main issues that he's dealing with. I realized a few years ago without uh, thinking, de Lube, thinking of de Lubac in particular, uh, I realized that all the things that I've been obsessed with as a theologian over the course of my adult life have been things that de Lubac was also obsessed with. And that's not accidental. I uh, read a lot of de Lubac, particularly in the early 90s when I was doing uh, a pastor, and then the mid to late 90s when I was doing my doctoral work. And de Lubac's obsessions became my obsessions. And the kinds of things that he does with those issues are, I think, crucial, not just for the development of Catholic theology in the 20th century, but they contain really important lessons for us as Protestants. Uh, we should read de Lubac and try to uh, apply what he's saying to our own uh, the theologies in our own churches.